I'm going to walk through the new feature in Google Documents where you can create tabs in your document and kind of clear up some questions that there might be. Um, it's a pretty cool feature that you can have in a document, but it does come with a couple kind of catches. I just want to say that right off the bat, it's really cool. It kind of makes a, web, um, a document more like a website where you can have certain pages that are kind of locked. So as you type, it doesn't kind of bump other pages down and it gives you ways to have sections in a document that don't get affected by anything else. The one downside is that when if you were to ever go and want to hard copy and print this document, every individual tab has to be printed on its own. You can't, by bulk, as of right now, print an entire document, including all of its tabs. So I'll kind of explain what that looks like. I'll show you, and you'll see it is kind of similar to a almost like a website in a way. Uh, it makes it really easy to jump around to certain pages. It's kind of like the table of contents on steroids. So I'm going to jump over to a sample document that I've got. And here I have created a tab. And I'll walk through those steps in just a minute. So the very first tab I named Outline. And I even put some hyperlinks to get to the other tabs, which you don't really need because they live over here on the left-hand side. So this little arrow on the left, if I click that, opens up kind of like a file system. So my very first tab, my main home page or my title page, I named outline, I put a picture on it. If I click the little tab, um, arrow over here, you'll see I made the next hierarchy are sections. And think of it as an outline. You know, you had your titles and now I've got subtitles in it. So in section one, I could just go right down here and I'm looking at my title page. I could click on section one and it'll take me to that page. So it's like turning the page of a book there. And under section one, I also put a couple more sections or tabs. So I have a section one, tab one, a section one, tab two, and a section one, tab three. All of these are individual pages. So I can edit these, and no matter what I do to this tab right here, it doesn't bounce down the other pages. So if you ever had a bunch of people in a document and someone starts typing and someone else is on another page and all of a sudden their stuff starts shifting down, you're only affecting this tab. So whatever I did here, these are all individual spaces. So I also have section two, and if I click on that, I have tabs underneath it as well. So I just made basically an outline here. I'd have my kind of home page or my main page to my document. This could be your instructions. And then you could have a section for maybe small groups. And in your groups, you could have, so let's say we're studying biomes. And then my first section would be the desert. And then maybe this is um, climate and rainfall and um, habitat and maybe animals that live there. Each one of these tabs could be a different piece that you need to maybe research. So it's really cool for students to work in a tabbed document. Keeping in mind, you can't print it all in one fail swoop. That's kind of the point of Google Documents is they're all digital. So it's really easy to use. Um, and you can hide this by clicking the little drop arrow. So maybe I don't want to see these tabs right now. I just click this little arrow whoop, and it shrinks away. I can click this arrow and they shrink away. Click this one and I just have my home page. But as I scroll down, that's the end of this document. There's nothing left unless I went to section two. And I scroll down and then I can go to the next section. So you can read it chronologically by scrolling and hitting this little thing at the bottom or jumping over here and just opening everything up and jumping to whatever section you want to go to. So it is a really cool way. Like I said, it almost mimics a website. I mean, if this were like a study guide for something, you could have maybe this is your social studies, um, Revolutionary War, and then section one could be the causes for the war, and then you could list taxes, and you could list representation, and then maybe section two might be the battles of the war, and then you could list the battles. So it's just a way to put a hierarchy on pages. So the way you do this when you first start a document, you're greeted with this. Over on the left, your tab one is always your home page. So you don't even have to do anything with it. You've already got one created, but you can name it. 
So if I click the three dots here, I can choose an emoji if I want to. And that's where you can kind of have things stand out a little bit. So you could scroll through all the available emojis and I'll just find something really simple like I'm just going to put a stop sign on it. And then right here, if I just double click in there, I could just say home page. And then if I click this, oh, I'm sorry, if I just start typing some things, this is home, oops, details, whatever, maybe directions, whatever you decide is your landing page. If I go over to this plus button and I click it, I've now made a new tab. And I'm going to call this, um, you know, section one. You can name it whatever you want. But right now, these two are equal things. If I want this to be under the home page, kind of tabbed over, I hit the three, uh, sorry, the three little dots here and I move it into the home page, you'll see it slides over. So if I create another one and I want this to be part of home page also, I can move it into home page and it slides over. But then maybe I want another big heading of some kind. And maybe this is, um, Middle page, whoopsie. <laughs> and my emoji I want to put here is maybe a red heart. Oop, it didn't turn red. Choose emoji. Let's just do, there's always so many to choose from. A yo-yo. There we go. So you can create as many tabs as you want. The only restriction on tabs is you can only have three layers, which means I could have my home page here and some little sections underneath it that if I just double click, I can name. So I'm going to call that section one and I'm going to call that section two. I'm, I didn't put any emo emojicons, but I can. I can create another tab and we'll just name this tab one for a second and if I drag this up here so I kind of want it here but I'm going to three dot I'm going to move it into section one and you'll see it slide over I can only have up to three indentations here I can have on my home page and then I can have something in that and something in that if I try to move let's say section two into this tab it won't be an option. So tab one isn't even a choice here. So I can only have it be three layers deep, if that makes sense. But like I was saying, once again, you can't print them in bulk. You would have to say, okay, I'm going to go back to my demo one. If I wanted this page, if I wanted to print the whole thing, I'd have to print this page, then go down to this one, print that page, and then print tab one, this, ta this page, this page so I'd have to go every one of these bundles these little groups and print each one of them if I were trying to get a hard copy so if you're printing things this isn't the best way to go but if you wanted maybe like I was saying students to work collaboratively or you wanted to organize your paper in a way that you could easily jump places other than using the table of contents so that each section is truly an independent piece tabs are a great way to do it so feel free to explore it, see if you like it. I don't know how often I would probably use this, but it is available. Um, I hope that helps clarify a little bit, and it's kind of a cool tool, so give it a try.